I'm Marty Stauffer. To the casual eye, a forest appears to be just a large blanket of greenery. But take a closer look, and you can see that each forest is an outgrowth of a complex progression in climate, earth history, and other variables. These elements have created and shaped our many different types of woodlands. Whether it's a marten playfully searching for a meal, or a spruce grouse performing its mating ritual, these woods provide shelter and food for thousands of wildlife species. North America is blessed with an amazing diversity of ecosystems, and depending on where you live, your perception of, quote, the forest will differ dramatically. Let's explore this variety of forested areas as we take a close-up look at a magical world in the forest. As winter releases its chilling grip, the land thaws, and the air comes alive with the sweet smell of spring. Here in Kentucky, a wood thrush attends to her young. These fledglings will be dependent on both their parents for approximately two weeks until they can venture out on their own. Our central forests are primarily comprised of deciduous trees, those which annually lose their leaves. This yearly process of shedding leaves is triggered when the sap in the tree stops flowing. A simultaneous process puts the tree to sleep for the cold winter months. As the days grow longer and warmer, spring blossoms into summer. The forest bursts with vitality. Enter the lively and curious marten. They're indigenous to our northern woods. This exuberant juvenile seems to be searching for a nest. Birds often nest in dead trees, and their eggs are one of the marten's favorite meals.
Martins require this type of mixed forest, made up of both deciduous and coniferous, or cone-bearing, trees. It provides all they need to survive. The cold light of the moon casts an eerie glow down through a tangle of branches. Nighttime turns every woodlot into an enchanted forest. In nature, all life feeds on death, as surely as day follows night. Like the marten, the black bear spends most of its time searching for food. It's quite at home under the dense canopy of a southern forest. This lush habitat provides the variety of flora necessary to sustain such a large omnivore. The seasons dictate each animal's diet. And since it's summer, the black bear feasts on a banquet of berries. The raccoon also enjoys berries although it prefers crayfish and frogs. This adaptable creature is found throughout the United States and will eat almost anything. Upon hearing the bear's approach, Br'er Raccoon abandons his appetite in favor of safety. This does not fool Br'er Bear. His keen sense of smell and constant curiosity lead him right to the masked bandit. Thank you. 
Although the bear outweighs the raccoon by at least 20 times and could easily have him for lunch, Br'er Bear seems more interested in playing than snacking. So a lucky raccoon watches the bear wander off to explore a grove of bald cypress trees. Unlike most conifers, the bald cypress sheds its leaves every autumn. In addition to cones, coniferous trees are also characterized by their ability to withstand severe conditions. In this case, the soil, and not the climate, is the obstacle to be overcome. The bald cypress has been a mystery to botanists for years. Its uniqueness lies in the peculiar surrounding outgrowths called knees. At one time, it was believed that the knees helped support the tree. Although this may be true, it is now believed that a primary function of the knees is to store food. As we travel west and head into canyon country, we find forests which are mainly comprised of coniferous species. The most prevalent tree is the ponderosa pine. This tree thrives in hot, arid climates. Its versatility has enabled it to withstand drought and has made it one of our most successful trees. Likewise, any animal living here must also have special features to help it withstand environmental hardships. This tassel-eared squirrel is one example of a creature that has survived where others failed. These specialized rodents rely on the prolific pines to provide them with food, shelter, and nesting habitat. Although seeds from the pine cones are their preferred food, the sweet inner bark of the branch, called cambium, sustains them year-round. Another unique attribute of the Ponderosa is an extensive root system which spans up to 100 feet and descends to depths of 30 feet. This system, combined with the unusual root shape, which are branched, not feathered, allows the tree to absorb all available water when the soil is saturated, but prevents it from sucking it dry when water is scarce. Also found in the mountains of our western states is the oldest known living thing, the bristlecone pine. Surprisingly, these trees survive in some of the most severe climatic conditions on our continent. They live at elevations in excess of 10,000 feet, where there is endless sunshine, but little water or oxygen. Many of these trees have been dead for hundreds of years, but their splintered skeletons remain. These trees have not decayed because the bacteria which would decompose them cannot exist in this arid, oxygen-scarce climate. It's hard to believe 
the same trees that were sprouting at the dawn of civilization are still growing today. In the Pacific forests of California are the giant sequoia. Sequoias are also quite old, some dating back over 2,500 years, but they're most renowned for their massive size. These huge trees were named after a great Cherokee chief. It's ironic that the same forces of progress which annihilated our Native American tribes are now threatening our last remaining old growth forests. Another old growth species of the Pacific Northwest is the towering redwood, a close relative of the sequoia and also in danger. It's not uncommon for these trees to reach heights of 350 feet, making them the tallest living things in the world. The mountain forests of our western United States vary greatly according to region. Here in the Rockies, the alpine forests are primarily coniferous. However, there's one deciduous tree that holds its own in this mountainous climate, the aspen. Autumn in the Rockies would not be the same without the golden shimmer of the aspen's leaves. With the onset of winter, activity in the forest drops along with the temperature. Most species either migrate to milder climates or hibernate through the winter months, but there are a few which remain. Whether nature provides them with a thick coat of fur or the ability to burrow deep beneath the cold surface, one thing is certain. Only the hardiest of creatures can survive severe mountain winters. In our moist northwestern forests, 
the trees grow tall and dense. These old trees provide habitat for countless species. One of the most engaging is the Franklin's grouse, a subspecies of the more common spruce grouse. The males have distinct mating territories where they compete for the female's attention by jumping out of a tree and flapping their wings. Nearby, a second male responds. A hen listens. This curious ritual is referred to as a flutter flight. These two cocks are vying for the attention of the hen. So they fly up and try again. The first one. Then the second. Because of limited visibility, forest species must often use noisy displays to attract a mate. Such is the case with the Franklin's grouse. The two males now begin an unusual flight display. In slow motion, we can see the dramatic double wing clap. Let's see that again. Although this practice may be dangerous, as it points out their position to any nearby predator, they risk it all in this mating contest. Finally, after days and sometimes weeks of this behavior, the hen selects a cock and joins him in his territory. The combs above the male's eyes swell with blood as he performs what is called a tail flick. After a few days, the hen will mate with the cock. Once they mate, the hen is on her own to nest and to raise the brood. In fact, if she should happen to wander into the male's territory, he'll immediately chase her away.
hopefully, we humans will use our awesome power to protect and not destroy our forests. Life in the forest is interconnected by many intricate threads which have spun a marvelous web of life. Seedlings sprout from dead trees as each generation prepares the soil for its successors. In this way, nature not only provides for itself, but also guarantees a bright future for all of us. When America was discovered hundreds of years ago, she was blanketed with 850 million acres of primeval woodlands. Today, less than one million acres remain. Fortunately, as our knowledge of forestry has grown, we've come to understand the importance of protecting our trees and the delicate balance they support. Now, as we head into the 21st century, we have the power to save our remaining old growth forests and to continue the replanting of new ones. Let's work together in saving these woodlands and in preserving the magic that thrives in the forest. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.